Okay, th thank you everybody. Uh, my name is Mengesha Bayan. I am a contractor with uh, Turner Fairbank Highway Research Center. My co-author, uh, Mr. Richard Manninger, APL Federal Manager, and Dr. Yad, uh, Jack Yochef, a uh, motor lab team leader. Just uh, a couple of bullets uh, regarding um, performance of aggregate materials. We like to move toward aggregate performance specs consider aggregate issue on a regional basis and advance best uses of recycled aggregate or, or blend with the natural aggregate. So the currently uh, one of the project we do here in the lab is uh, image analysis of thin sections of several types of recycled concrete aggregates. Uh, some of the images here, which I will talk uh, about it in detail in a moment. So what uh, today I'm talking about is how do we use petrography method in evaluating recycled aggregate, uh, aggregates. Acceptance of RCA in construction use remains low in the US despite the potential benefits. One of the problem is the lack of a reliable method to characterize the quality level of these materials. So we think petrography can be a good tool to evaluate the quality and variability of this RCA, is it from a single source or different sources? Just a simple definition of RCA, it's a crushed demolishing concrete, often used as a base material, uh, often considered as low in, in technology. There are four types of RCA just uh, to introduce. So type one is crushed concrete pavement or structure of known quality and constituents. It may have steel or other material, but that can be removed during the processing of the aggregate. Type two is crushed the returning concrete from a concrete production operation uh, that hardens and crushed. Type three is crushed, mixed urban rubble, rubble or mostly concrete, but often include other brittle materials such as brick and tile. Type four is returning concrete uh, treated in a revolving mix and drum to produce hardened cement or if, if you will, the um, nodules. Why you use RSA in construction? A simple uh, answer is sustainability, a good for economics and environment. The other reason is shortage of good quality virgin aggregate in some part of the US and other parts of the world. According to EPA 2016, 375 million tons of concrete waste was produced in 2014. So uh, what I'm talking, how do we use petrography methods to characterize this material? First, we look, we characterize the physical and metallurgical properties and change in service on statistically representative RCA sample, meaning it's similar to doing petrography on a virgin aggregate using C295, but you modify to for this material. So what do we look during the uh, you know, evaluation of this material? We identify different RCA from different sources, evaluate the physical and immunological variability from particle to particle, either from single or, or multiple sources, so what do we use during this analysis? Those are some of the methods. Microscopic examination, water drop observation, qualitative piece hardness, scratch test, stereo microscopic examination, polarized light microscopy, which is a transmitted light techniques, and the fluorescent light microscopy, which is using a fluorescent uh, light source, and it's uh, basically the reflected light, and then image analysis. So uh, during the examination, what exactly I'm talking about when I say condition and physical property of RSA particle? For example, you look into relative pest hardiness and variability from particle to particle, porosity and variability among the RSA particles, condition of the interfacial transitions on ITZ at the motor and aggregate interfaces, then evaluate any existing damage of the RSA particle from from other mechanisms in service, such as alkali aggregate reaction, uh, sulfate attack, freestyle, or what have you. Then, of course, you identify the aggregate type in, in the mineralogy included in that RCA. So other characteristics to look into during the evaluation, cement paste composition, uh, degree of hydration of cement grains, relics of cement grains, or is that partial hydration cement grains, air entrainment, is yes or no? relative density of paste microstructure using a combination of 
fluorides chlor light microscopy, which is a transmitted light, and fluorescence light microscopy, which is a reflected light, then sees the degree of variability from particle to particle. Then finally, you, see, you look into degree of carbonation and variability. Here is a photograph of a sieved you know, uh, RSA sample. We looked at it uh, from uh, ranging from top one inch to uh, a pan, which, uh, which is past number eight sieve. So how do we do this? We basically using parts of STMC-295, but modified for RCA, okay? So what do you, how, how do you group it? What, what kind of feature you look into? For example, relative amount of attached motor to the coarse aggregate, or is there, how much is mortar particle without coarse aggregate, relative pest hardiness, scratch test, water drop absorption rate of the pest, fast or slow, coarse aggregates with little or no motor, mineralogy, grain size, pigment color, and other miscellaneous foreign materials. So using this uh, criteria I just mentioned, we used for this uh, aggregate, we looked at it, uh, basically this is similar to STMC-295 uh, petrography. So table 1A, I don't know if you can say it clearly, maybe you can't, but we group it using that criteria into six groups, where the photograph is shown, for example, for one half inch in the left side, uh, you know, for, for the six groups. 1B is the weighted percentage. Using the sieve analysis data, you calculate the weighted percentage for each group and you know how much material you have and your representative aggregate from each group. So this is just a close up just to show you the different constituents that we group it by looking at these aggregates. So what is the result showed us? The result showed variability for an urban rubble RSA sample. For example, the water drop pest absorption test, what I saw is water absorption time varied. Example, one second to 90 seconds, very slow. So I watched this under a stereo microscopic candle, you drop water, you know, have it times and see how, you know, you know, how long it takes that, that the water to sift through the, the pest. Then RSA wash to see the amount of surface dust as you know, excessive dust and loose material may impact RSA performance. Then pest hardiness scratching test, related pest hardiness, and the amount of motor observed varied from sample to sample. RSA particles vary from relatively hard through moderately hard to moderately soft. This is relative ter terminology. Just to show you uh, some photograph of different RSA particles from the same source, okay? On the left is, on top is a gravel or aggregate. Uh, mostly quartz, with uh, a, a mortar, which is kind of beige color. Then when you drop, it's, um, when you scratch it, it's moderately soft. And when you drop the water, it's, it goes faster. Whereas on the right-hand side, it is a crushed coarse aggregate. Then the mortar color, if you see the paste color, the mortar is gray, right? And if you drop water, it sips slowly, okay? So that, that's uh, the... Then uh, from thin section microscopy, uh, using you use transmitted light microscopy and, and uh, reflected light microscopy, basically PLM and FLM. So I like to say a, a little bit about fluorescence microscopy. I know some of you know about this, but I like to give you just a little bit of introduction. Fluorescence microscopy used in life science for many years and has been used in concrete photography since the 1980s to generate fluorescence contrast in concrete constituents. So how we use this fluorescent light microscopy, first the specimen should be vacuum impregnated with fluorescent dye epoxy that fills the pores and the cracks. And in fluorescence microscopy, we use a blue and yellow light blocking filter, which allows for easier observation, observation of density variation and also the porosity and crack and void is. Porous area in crack, in thin section, in fluorescence mode, appear yellow. Why is that? Because the higher amount of fluorescence epoxy in the capillary porosity or in the cracks. Cement paste, on the other hand, appears as shades of green. What I mean shades of green? Because it's influenced by the amount of capillary voids, or if you will, ordinal paste water. Aggregate generally is black. 
uh, and inflorescence mode and unless it's porous or cracked. So the principle behind fluorescence microscopy is that the shades of grain, this is very important, of the cement paste depend on the capillary porosity, okay? So a shade of grain, what I mean is fluorescence intensity or if you will, brightness of the cementitious paste. These differences are attributed to the degree of hydration or reaction, water to cement or cementitious ratio, changes in density after loading or environment of the concrete uh, during service. So paste hardiness versus bulk paste porosity, how do you correlate this? Uh, hardiness is a simple scratch test of the, the paste, right? The uh, porosity more the microstructure uh, uh, future. So the relationship or related paste hardiness in water drop absorption rate with the bulk paste porosity include, for example, in this example, a harder paste and slower water drop absorption in A shown in the left top, which is a fractured concrete surface, correlate with the denser microstructure, which is shown in B. Why, why do I know it's denser? Because in fluorescence mode, a denser area appear darker because of the lesser porous capillary porosity in it, okay? On the other hand, on C, it's the paste is moderately soft to soft, relatively faster water drop absorption rate, generally correlates with relatively porous paste microstructure. Why is that post localized? The color is brighter. That's a function of more capillary porosity in your paste. Also, we can do quantitative data on area fraction and counts can be obtained from the fluorescence images by calibrating the fluorescence intensity. Example, look at A, the top left corner. This is the fluorescence image, just a, a, a picture. The darker area, like I said, are aggregates, okay? They are pre-aggregates. So you know exactly the border of the aggregate. You calibrate the threshold for that, then as shown in B in blue color, that is the area fraction occupied by as aggregate. And in C is the fraction of the denser paste, meaning the dark green paste on the frozen image in A, which well correlated with the red area in C. You calculate that too. And then C, D is area fraction of porous area in generally cracks, voids, or porous area in the paste. You calculate that. At the end, the software will give you a composite map uh, combining B, uh, C, and D, and also give you a table of the area fraction occupied by the aggregate, the denser paste, which is dark green paste, and the light green paste. Now, for example, in this, aggregate is about 53%, the denser dark green paste is 20, 28%, and the light green paste is about 19%. What else you can do from microscopy, from transmitted light, you identify the aggregates, right? Like a normal uh, petrography. For example, in this RCA, we looked at it, of course, aggregates are consist of marble, metacarbonate, church, and arenaceous limestone. Whereas the fine aggregate uh, are two cases in here. In the left, A and B, most of the, uh, mainly are quartz with a lesser amount of church, chalcedony, sandstone, arenaceous limestone, limestone field spar in the strain quarters with miscellaneous trace amount of micas and opaque grain. On the other hand, on the C and D, on the right hand side, it's mostly limestone with a lesser quad, which means you have really a, a mix of two sources, even if it's one source, so it's a different finality. What about general condition of any damage? You can also do that. Uh, are there a sign of apparent ASR or another damage mechanism? In this photo micrograph, which is frozen side images, uh, some of the RC particles in this image show micro crack locally, mostly in the paste, but also in area cutting across those, some of those aggregates. What about the gaps? How do you know if you have gaps, cracks, observe it, you know, in the IT? Two minutes system. left. Okay. So you see also here, as a scene and the, after image processing, you can clearly see the gap at the paste and aggregate interfaces. Okay, what about the dense porous the bulk paste microstructure? You see the same thing, okay? Here, for example, in A is a thin section photomicrograph, a polarized light, B is a fluorescence image equivalent, and C is a processed image. 
So the irritant is the variability of the course aggregate from one sample to, a, to another sample. What we use is we use the ratio of the, the dark green paste, the orange versus the light green paste, yellow, to get the ratio. For example, in this case, it's 0.56. Whereas the one on the right hand side is 1.83. So you have a mix of two paste microstructure in this RCA source. Carbonation uh, also can be studied by uh, polarized microscopy. Uh, it appears like high bifurgence calcium carbonate, whereas the fluorescence mi microscopy helps to determine whether the carbonate portion is relatively dense or porous. Strongly carbonate area appears to appear denser, darker in front mode, and only differentiated from a denser non-carbonate paste using polarized made techniques. That means you have to use a combination of these both techniques. Locally carbonate paste appear porous. Some area, for example, let me show you here. Uh, for example, in A, it's, if you see in the left-hand side, it's a beige color, right? That's fully carbonated area. If you see the equivalent fluorescence image at the bottom, it appears darker, right? But the one on the right-hand side is the non-carbonated area. You see shades of green in, in the fluorescence microscope image. Let's go to the E for uh, entirely carbonated uh, paste. Look at the fluorescence image at the bottom. It's totally uh, darker green. Uh, also, in some particles, it's not carbonated. So as you see here, A is the uh, yeah, fluorescence image, B is the, the fluorescence image uh, equivalent, which shows, uh, uh, like I said, the black colors are aggregate, the shade of greens are the, the paste, and C are the image after image processing. As you see, the ratio of both the samples are 1.3 and 1.4, which is almost the same. So conclusion, Petro petrography can be a valuable tool in characterizing and evaluating RCA for use in new construction. Classify RCA using modified C295 method based upon the degree of residual motor content that touches the coarse aggregate, amount of discrete motor particles, presence of aggregates with little or no motor based cover, and presence of other miscellaneous uh, constituents. Evaluate the overall condition using different microscopic techniques degree of damage, cracking with any, and identify mechanics of any damage such as ASR, sulfate attack, or what have you. Important, more importantly, how do you identify RCA from different sources? Here is our recommendation. Use a combination of three or more of the following factors. Relative paste hardness in water drop absorption rate, composition of the relics of cementitious material, Composition of the coarse and fine aggregates. Coarse fine aggregate is a gravel, natural sand, or crushed. Airborne content, entrant versus non entrant low versus high, luster and color of the paste. Thank you very much for your time.